Welcome back to Rotten and Forgotten. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different than what you're used to because instead of working on a small engine or a snowmobile or a four-wheeler, we're going to be working on our camera equipment. Now, I know that doesn't sound the most interesting, but bear with me here. We're going to have some fun because I've kind of acquired an issue. You know, when I first started making videos, I just used the onboard camera mic and they sound really trashy, especially when you're filming inside of a tin can with a concrete floor and you're walking around vehicles and motors and it's just not ideal. So I picked up an onboard mic. You probably haven't seen it if you're not paying attention, but if you are, I got this little block in my pocket and I got a little microphone clipped on my shirt, usually on sweatshirts and stuff too, put it on the neck, whatever. It works great. It takes that crappy audio and turns it into just smooth, majestic, rotten and forgotten noise. But sometimes I run into an issue when I'm working on things. I'll bend over and all of a sudden my microphone's dead. Now, if it wasn't for that camera behind you, you wouldn't be hearing me right now. And that's what the onboard camera sounds like. You get a little more of a tinny sound, it's just not crisp and clean. Anyways, enough camera talk. We need to fix this issue and it's really simple. I turned you back on. The issue stems from this little power button on the bottom of the unit. This is a transmitter and this little block on top, that camera is the receiver. Now this is super handy because I can walk around and do whatever and I'm not strung to a cord going to the camera. It's all on my person, you know, and I just keep this little bugger tucked in my pocket. But every once in a while, you know, I bend down the wrong way and I hit that button and it cuts out my mic. And usually I'm too busy working and wrenching and having a great time. I don't even realize it until I go to the next frame or just change camera position and then I see 45 minutes have been nothing but silence. And usually the best part of the video happens when the mic's turned off. But anyways, we're gonna address that today by using some 21st century technologies and it's gonna get fun and in depth and it's gonna be great. But to start off, we need to get our dimensions off our block. To get the dimensions of our transmitter, I'm gonna use this caliper and I'm gonna figure out our length and our width and our height and I'm gonna put it onto this 2D diagram and then we'll know how everything goes for when we hit the computer lab. I got done scribbling, and I know it looks like a complicated mess, but it's really not that complicated. What we got going on on this chalkboard is a 2D model of our transmitter, and all we're doing is trying to find our lengths and our widths and our heights. So this, you know, is just a square block. It's 44 millimeters by 44 millimeters, and it's 14 millimeters deep. So we got that figured out and that's simple enough, but once you turn it on its side, you got yourself a little clip and a charging port. Flip it on the other side, you got yourself a power button and on the top, you got an internal microphone and an external microphone. So we had to take all those other gadgets and doodads into consideration when we we're building our model. So our simple, you know, number figuring got a little more complicated, but you know, it's not too bad. A guy can still figure it out and that's exactly what we're gonna do. You might be asking yourself, what, what are you gonna use the numbers for? Okay, you figured it out. How's that gonna make your mic stop turning off? Well, we're gonna take all these numbers and punch them into the computer, make ourselves a 3D model of this transmitter, and then we're gonna take that transmitter model and form a case to go around it all using free software. So let's get started. We gotta go start digital booping on the computer. We're gonna be using Tinkercad to do our 3D modeling. This is a free online web browser modeling software. It's about as easy and basic as you can get for 3D modeling. All a guy has to do is just drag the shapes off the side onto the plane, drop them down and start punching in dimensions. Next thing you know, we're gonna have ourselves a 3D model. And this square represents our transmitter, although it looks like a boring square. You just gotta give it a little bit of time and next thing you know, we've got ourselves a transmitter in our 3D model. Now, of course, this isn't exactly dimensionally accurate. We don't have the nice smooth curves on the corners and things are just a little bit off, but it should be good enough to start basing our case off of. 
So let's build that too. There's a lot of different things we have to take into consideration while building the case. First off, that transmitter has to fit into the case and be removable. Secondly, we need access to our charging port and our power button and the mic input and output. So the case has to be skeletonized. After a little more tinkering, we start to get something that resembles a case. It looks pretty darn good on our model, but it's not real yet. So I'm going to pull the transmitter model out of the way and take our case and send it to an STL file. So we got ourselves a 3D file and we have ourselves a 3D printer. Now it's not quite as easy as you think. I can't just shoot that STL file into the 3D printer because the 3D printer can't read an STL file. The 3D printer needs a code to run because this 3D printer runs on three axes, just like our 3D modeling. We have an X, a Y, and a Z. Now, you can think of a printer kind of like a hot glue gun on steroids. Instead of glue sticks, we have filament up here on a spool, and it travels on an X, Y, Z axis, but other than that, it's pretty much the same concept as a hot glue gun. It's laying down a nice thin line of plastic everywhere it goes, and when it's following the code, it can build objects. Now, talking about the code, we need to make a G-code file, and to do that, we're gonna have to use Lulzbot Slicer. Now, a slicer is another computer program. So, let's dive into that, too. Here is our 3D case model inside the Lulzbot Slicer. Now, the slicer is gonna take this STL file and actually turn it into a tangible object using the 3D printer. As you can see, our model sitting on the print bed in this simulation. So this is exactly how it's going to come out on the print bed in the real world. Now the printer works on three basic planes, just like our 3D model. We have our X, our Y, and our Z. Now it's going to take the X and Y and lay it out on a flat plane, just like a 2D model. And once it gets that base layer done, it's going to move up one click on the Z axis and make another layer. And it's going to repeat this process over and over and over again until the model's completely built and we have a tangible object. Now that's probably not the best explanation of how everything works, but it gives you a base idea. Of course, we can't just print on thin air, so we have to add supports, and that's what you're seeing here. All of our open spaces need to be filled up while that printer's building each layer, and that's exactly what adding supports does. The question is whether this is the efficient way to print this model, and the answer is no. If we simply take this case and flip it 90 degrees and lay the back onto the print bed, we're gonna cut our layers down at over half. I mean, we're down to 73 layers before it was gonna be 199. Not only that, we got rid of most of our supports and we also cut our print time in half. We were at an hour and 18 minutes on the 199 layers. Now that we're down to 73 layers, it's only gonna take 36 minutes. This is the way we're gonna to try to print this for the first attempt, so there we go. We got that STL file into a G-code and it is sliced in this SD card. So now all we have to do is just come over here and turn the printer on and we're gonna insert our SD card. Oh, wrong way. So now that I have the SD card inserted, I can just print straight from the media, click that button, print. Now, as you can see, the machine's booting up. It's gonna start heating up that hot end. We're printing with PLA filament. Now, if you're new to the whole 3D printing thing, there is so many rabbit holes you can jump down, and there is so much information on these things throughout the internet and the YouTubes. Just Google 3D printer, and you can be entertained for hours. They're pretty impressive machines, and they can do a lot. Let's see if we can't get ourselves a case made. Just like that, our 3D model is now a tangible object. Let's remove these inside supports and see if our transmitter fits. I want a big wall inside there. So all those supports that we saw on the slicer were made to be removed. That's what I'm doing right now. Well, here we are, the moment of truth. Is our case gonna fit the transmitter? Remember, that's what we did all the scribbling on the chalkboard for, and that's what we've been working on this whole episode is for this part right here. And here we go. It fits. 
Isn't that something? We have access to our clip on the back, we have access to our power button, our charging port, and our internal microphone is still plugged in. Or external, I should say. But yeah, that's pretty darn good. Can I clip it on my pants yet? By golly, I can. Now I can bend over and it doesn't turn off, hopefully. It should eliminate 95% of the issues like that. I mean, I can bring my bench back over here and you guys can still hear me. Wow, let's try it without the case. Yeah, I know it's pretty fascinating how buttons work, huh? You're back now, I turned it back on. The case works, wow, but it could use some improvement. Our first case design was successful and everything worked kind of as I planned, which never happens, but I guess I'll take the win this time. There's of course room for improvements and that's what I'm doing here. I'm just tightening up the tolerances on the case, trying to make it fit a little bit snugger against the transmitter. And I want to stiffen up our corners and make it a little more robust so it can live out in the shop and maybe last more than a week. Now one of the other things I want to do is round out the corners and make it look a little less blocky. Now with Tinkercad it's a little harder to do than with other CAD softwares, but it's free. So we just have to work with what we got. If a guy gets a little crafty, we can make round corners. It just takes a little more time and it's not quite as precise, but it's gonna do the job. Precision doesn't matter with this. We just want a functioning case. We're about 40 minutes in now and we're on version number two of the case and it's looking pretty legit. Back into the slicer we go. We're gonna take that model, flip it 90 degrees and check everything out. Make sure it looks like it's gonna print right, which it does. Let's give this one a shot. The transmitter clipped right into V2 and we have a nice smooth case now with a more robust design. I think that should do the trick. I tell you what, it's always something when you can take an idea out of your head and draw it out on a chalkboard. And then you take that chalkboard drawing and throw it in the internet and then you pull that internet 3D model out and you make it into something tangible. I mean, it's just incredible what the technologies can do nowadays. And yeah, anyways, try not to take it all for granted. Remember, you got yourself a screen in your pocket that didn't used to be there and you've got things better now than it's ever been. So just be thankful, I guess, if you take anything from this episode. But yeah, thank you guys for watching Rotten and Forgotten. I appreciate it. If you like what you saw, stick around. But until next time, we'll see you later with better audio, maybe. <laughs>